Welcome back. This is part two of my ongoing series about how I'm building a home-built ventilator. As you can see, I've made some progress since my last video. I decided to go with a stepper motor instead of the AC gear motor because I wanted to be able to change the speed of the motor. So while I was waiting for some of those parts, I spent most of last week programming the PLC. And now that I have all the parts that I need to complete the project, I'm finally getting some of the mechanical work done. So let me show you all the parts that I got and how they're all going to fit together. This diagram is kind of a high level view showing all the controls, hardware and sensors involved in my ventilator project. This is the control panel for my ventilator. This sets the motor speed. This is a two axis joystick with click for setting values on the PLC screen and just a start and stop button for controlling the mode and starting the machine. This is my pulse generator. This is what sets the speed of the stepper motor. So this is sending high frequency pulses to the drive. The drive amplifies those pulses into something that the motor can use for high current. The PLC will tell this drive to either run or stop or run backwards based on feedback from the arm position sensor. So this is what's gonna tell the drive when to stop, start and reverse. And everything's plugged in right now, so I can actually make this run. So this is 200 hertz. And I can crank it up. And the drive is pretty quick to react. It does seem like a bit of a waste to have such a huge motor only doing about a quarter of a turn, so it would be nice to have a gearbox, but that adds quite a bit of expense. It was cheaper just to buy a larger motor. And this is just showing the mechanical action of the arms. And one nice thing about this mechanical design compared to some of the other cam-driven mechanisms is an operator can just reach in and start operating the bag manually if something went wrong with the, the automation. And it's also easy to remove the bag without disconnecting any hoses. I can show you what it looks like under the hood. So I'm using a stepper motor with a belt to actuate the arms. I was a little worried about machining a small plastic gear to drive these teeth. So I think the belt for my case will be a little more robust. Made sure to leave some clearance here so the belt won't rub on the bellows. And here's a look at the back side. And I have a provision here for mounting my position sensor arm. This is the sensor I'm using for measuring the position of the arm. It's a Hall effect sensor, so it's solid state. There's no wiper arm to wear out. And this is actually off of a Land Rover. This is what they use for measuring the ride height on their air suspension. It should be fairly ruggedized and they're cheap at $16 a piece. I'm planning on cutting the sensor arm short so that I can maximize the travel of the sensor based on the limited stroke of the ventilator arm. So the full breathing apparatus has arrived, starting with the bag. This has a valve to only let air in the inlet side and only let air out the outlet side. And there's also a pop-off valve, so if there's an overpressure event, this will bleed pressure off before sending too much pressure to the patient's lungs. Air flows through this intake hose, through a water separator cup, and into this Y, which supplies air to the mask. The splitter has some tap lines, and I'm using one of those tap lines to hook up my pressure transducer. This will measure pressure in the mask. On the exhaust side, there's a PEEP valve, which maintains a certain minimum pressure inside the patient's lungs. So let's say it's maintaining 0.1 PSI in the mask, and as the patient inhales, that pressure will drop to zero, and that will be the trigger to start the next breathing cycle on the ventilator. I wanted to quickly show how to install the PLC program. 
into the PLC. Just use an SD card and save the file as a .bin. Here's my PLC and the card goes in upside down from what you would think. Program's automatically loaded. I'm gonna run through the screens real quick. I'll do a more detailed video on the PLC program at a later date, but just wanted to show you all the screens that I have programmed so far. Some of the icons are broken on the screen because there's no I.O. hooked up. This is why the screen's in a red backlight right now. But I have a lot of alarms and step sequencers are displayed on the screen so that the operator can see what the PLC is expecting to go to the next step. And one kind of cool thing is the screen will normally be white and when it's waiting for the patient to inhale to trigger the next breath, it will be displayed in an orange backlight. The most time consuming part of this project is milling the teeth on the gears and sprockets. I'm using a 16th inch end mill with a 10 millimeter depth. So to keep down on deflection and make sure I don't snap the bit, I have to go really slow and take really shallow cuts. So it takes a really long time. I am always impressed with how high a quality the cuts are. And it is always satisfying to stop your end mill just shy of hitting the wasteboard. I really like having a paper thin layer of plastic to cut off with a deburring tool. And since my end mill is only 10 millimeters deep, I had to machine the pulley in two separate halves. So I'm using some dowel pins to pin them together. And it's nice that the pulley has a, a lip on both sides to keep the belt centered. One thing that sets this project apart from others is that this actually has feedback to measure when the patient's trying to inhale. When the patient takes a breath, the pressure in the mask will drop, and that's the signal to tell this ventilator to start pumping air into their lungs. A lot of the other ventilator projects I'm looking at are just a windshield wiper motor that's you know, just going on a fixed time, so if the patient happens to be exhaling and the machine's trying to blow air in, the patient's always gonna have to try and stay synchronized with the machine. This ventilator, because it has feedback, it will synchronize with the patient instead. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative. If you'd like more information, or if you'd like to download any of my PLC code or drawings, they're available on my webpage. The link is in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me some comments. And I hope to have part three coming out in the next week. And by then, it should be fully functional, I hope. Thanks for watching.